Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to 3307. This is where I take a look at the news and happenings in and around Elite Dangerous. This week we have the start of what appears to be a new Elite Dangerous mystery. The Galactic Summit continues in the Sirius star system and some players managed to get an SRV to a fleet carrier. Mysteries have been a big part of Elite Dangerous more or less from day one. An hour Frontier had teased a new one that potentially could be Thargoid related. Yesterday they posted this image to Twitter along with the question, what's your favourite mystery in Elite Dangerous? Now that all seems innocent enough, however in the bottom left corner there is some Morse code which translates to the word Hesperus. Personally, then I suspect this actually relates to the poem, The Wreck of the Hesperus. You can actually find that with a Google search. Now the poem tells the tragic story of a ship's voyage that ends in, well, tragedy. Uh, a strong possibility then that this may relate to a new as yet undiscovered generation ship, with just maybe some potential for Thargoids to somehow be thrown into the mix. Backing up this theory of a generation ship, is an additional Morse code message which was revealed at the beginning of today's official Elite Dangerous livestream. The Morse code gave the word Azimuth. So we've got the word Hesperus, which could potentially be the name of a particular object, and we've got the word Azimuth. Now this seems to be the part that Frontier gives some indication as to the direction and location of this object. Azimuth, of course, is a method used in measuring the direction of a celestial body or a satellite from the observer's current position. Now it's distinctly possible, remotely possible perhaps, that Azimuth is actually referring to something else and being used as a name here. For example, Azimuth Biochemicals, which in Elite Dangerous is a corporation. The corporation owns the Adamant Star, which is a low old class science vessel mega ship. And this was actually found as a ghost ship back in October of last year. So there may well be a connection there. But if it is coordinates or a direction, then it's very likely it will be revealed very soon. Maybe even at the end of today's official Elite Dangerous live stream. If so, I will leave it in a pinned comment below this video. Now, in addition to azimuth, if you're actually trying to find a location, you also need elevation. That's something that Frontier as yet hasn't revealed. Now, do keep in mind that the idea of this being a generation ship is purely speculation on my part. There are, of course, many other possibilities. Hesperus does, after all, relate to Greek mythology. Keep in mind that all the Thargoid interceptors so far revealed and so far seen have been named after Greek mythological creatures. Whilst the word Hesperus isn't a mythical creature, it is nonetheless created to, or related rather, connected to Greek mythology, the morning star Venus. Whatever way it goes, it seems likely we will be seeing and hearing much more about this over the next few days. The ongoing, in fiction, Galactic Summit currently underway in the Sirius star system has been reported on by Galnet. One of the subjects of focus is very much about Thargoids. The collective powers of the galaxy then have been discussing the best approach to deal with the aliens. It appears that the Alliance are all for an all-out aggressive response the Empire and Federation, meanwhile, seem to prefer a more measured response. Professor Tezaru of the Akanar Research Council has pleaded for a fresh support to Aegis, the Alien Research and Defense Initiative. Aegis will be undertaking new research into the Guardian technology and hope to discover a breakthrough that might help the fight against the Thargoids. Prime Minister Mahon of the Alliance, meanwhile, has proposed a strategic cooperation against the Thargoids. The agreement has been titled the Sirius Treaty and is currently being looked at by the respective galactic leaders and powers. A decision on whether or not to ratify the agreement will be made towards the end of the week. Now with this new law, it seems very likely that at minimum we can expect to see a few new community goals. Also, at an outside stretch here, it's possible we may see some new Guardian-related modules or weapons which would be pretty interesting indeed, wouldn't it? Both the Hutton Truckers and Fuel Rats are famed around the world, and both for very different reasons. This year, their legendary events continue with a trip into the Antarctic. On board the vessel, the MPV Everest, Hutton member Commander Dog's Breath, along with honorary Fuel Rat Brad, are carrying some elite goodies on their mission. The purpose of the mission is to carry fuel to Casey Station 
a permanent research outpost in the Antarctic. Photos show the elite-inspired goodies on the voyage, a fuel rice mug and a cannon flask. These will eventually be returned back home and sold to raise money for charity. It really does seem like an epic journey, and there's also a whole bunch of vlogs to read which are available on the forums. If you want to take a look at these, you can find the entire thread linked in the video description. So, travelling to the Antarctic is certainly a long-distance adventure. Another long-distance adventure is also one quite unusual, and that is getting an SRV to a fleet carrier. Very recently, Commander Brono achieved precisely this thanks to some pretty amazing teamwork by the Infernal Expedition. The SRV was launched from an extremely low-G world and slowly but surely guided towards an orbiting fleet carrier. To achieve this, a variety of ships and ship-launched fighters gently nudged it along its way. Now, to be honest, I've actually made it sound uh, far easier than it actually was. It seems that this was a fairly complex and challenging process. Thankfully, the entire journey has been documented on the Elite forums with step-by-step -step details on how it was achieved. Quite an adventure then, and one very unusual and unique achievement. Last week, we got our first look at a mission undertaken in the upcoming Elite Expansion Odyssey. The video of the mission began in orbit on one of the new Odyssey planets, which actually looked very nice indeed. Now, the ever-great Commander Rini of the Burr Pit took it at a perfect opportunity to make a side-by-side -side comparison of the new world. The screenshot then shows the world as it exists today in Elite, compared to how it will actually look in Odyssey. As you can see, the difference is rather remarkable. Do check out the link in the video description where you can find a link to the original Reddit post and images. Moving on to something distinctly non-Elite related, I wanted to briefly let you all know about a brand new YouTube channel I've created. Now the content on the new channel certainly won't appeal to everyone here, but I do think a good number of you will actually like it. The channel is focused on Warhammer, and initially will contain a bunch of YouTube shorts on the history and lore of various Warhammer games and all the previous editions. Already there's two short videos, one on the first edition of Warhammer 40,000, another on the second edition. There'll also be plenty more on the way too. In addition to the shorts, the channel will also have some regular length videos as well on all things Warhammer related. So if like me, you're a fan of Warhammer, then it would be awesome to have you come on over and check out the new videos and maybe even subscribe to the channel. You can find a link below. That then brings us to an end of this episode of 3307. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.